And we'll move on to the next speaker, which is Lawrence Cabrera Bosque from INRA in Montpellier. And he will talk about high throughput in estimation of incident light, light interception and radiation use efficiency of thousands of plants in a phenotyping platform. Uh, thanks, Bettina, and to the organization for choosing our talk. So I'm going to talk about the methods that we have developed in the PhenoArts phenotyping platform for estimating incident light, light interception, and radiation use efficiency in uh, thousands of plants. So as a context, context, understanding the controls of biomass accumulation is a major challenge in the context of, of climate change. According to the question of Monteith, we know that biomass can be uh, expressed as a function of the incident light reaching the crop. The amount of this light that is intercepted, that is basically depends on the leaf area and the architecture of this crop. And finally, and how efficiently this intercepted light is converted to a biomass, the radiation use efficiency that depends basically on photosynthesis. So uh, <coughs> taking advantage of the, of the possibilities of uh, phenotyping platforms, we have developed a suite of methods for deriving each one of the terms of this equation. And we tested whether these radiation use efficiency values were stable between experiments and related to leaf gas exchange. And finally, we extend these methods for extracting other uh, related traits to light interception, like interception efficiency and uh, like the extinction coefficients from virtual experiments. So just briefly, for, tho for those who, who don't know uh, PhenoArch, is a phenotyping platform that uh, aims at analyzing the genetic determinism of plant responses to environmental conditions, mainly drought, temperature, and light, and is an automatic system for having uh, RGB images and control of uh, plant respiration with a capacity of 17,000 plants that is uh, uh, compatible with genetic uh, studies, genetic association studies. So the first thing we need is the incident light. While it's quite obvious when we, you go to the field that you have no problems for estimating this incident light, when you go to uh, growth chambers or, or greenhouses, uh, we see that there's a, a big, large, spatial availability of light. Because uh, we, here we see uh, uh, the output of eight uh, power sensors in the greenhouse, uh, yielding a significant variation in available, available light. And this is explained because uh, of the number of structures, lamps, uh, shades, uh, uh, columns, beams, and also the surrounding and buildings uh, and uh, even trees that are blocking this light and, and they produce a variability, a spatial and temporal variability that can go up to 30%. One of the solutions will be installing hundreds of power sensors, but our technicians will, need, will not be very happy because this will be difficult to maintain and to calibrate. So what we have done is to develop a method for mapping this uh, available light for every day of the year. Here we have our greenhouse. So what we did, we took hemispherical images of the roof of the greenhouse every square meter. <coughs> and then we analyzed those images for extracting the, the part of these images that are related uh, to the structures and uh, what was the sky. And we used these hemispherical images for two things. First, we uh, calculated the amount of diffuse light that is transmitted, and we used a standard over sky model that takes into account the zenith angle and the gap fractions. And then we interpolated these results to the rest of the greenhouse, and we obtained this kind of uh, light map that is showing how light, uh, diffuse light is transmitted in the different positions of the greenhouse. We did similarly the same for the direct light transmission, but here the things are uh, slightly different because uh, this transmission of direct light, it depends on the hour and the day of the year. So what we did was to simulate, simulate for every hour and day of the year the sun, the relative position of the sun, and we calculated how this direct light was transmitted at each position, and then we interpolated to the different uh, positions in the greenhouse, but in this case, we obtained uh, a map for every day of the year. So putting all together all this information, we, we mixed this direct light uh, transmission maps and the diffusion light map, and then we obtained a local amount for each XY position in the greenhouse with differences that were accounted between 10 and 30% depending on the season. And of course, the results were, were validated with the power sensors that, that were placed at fixed positions in the greenhouse. The second thing was to 
to create a method for uh, measuring how much of this uh, incident light was intercepted. And here we had a problem because uh, compared with field experiment where you have a plot of the same genotype, an homogeneous plot, uh, I would say that in 99% of uh, platform experiments, we have experiments that uh, harbor uh, composite canopies. That means that one plant is surrounded, by, is surrounded by plants of different genotypes. So we end up with this situation where we have a small plant uh, with neighbors that are bigger or smaller with different areas and different architecture. To solve this problem, we used the RATP uh, functional structural plan model that takes into account these problems by uh, describing the geometry of the canopy with an array of 3D cells. As you can see in, 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 this, in this image. And each cell, it may contain leaves of different plants or leaves, different leaves of the same plant. And each voxel is characterized by the leaf angle distribution inside this voxel and the leaf area density that can be derived from the 3D representations. So the first thing we needed was to obtain uh, these uh, leaf angles. Every day we take images, site, different site images at different angles for each plan. And you can see here that this image is uh, showing a lot of information. So we see a lot of leaves and which are the angles. On the contrary, this image is not showing too much information. So for choosing which was the best image for each plan, we use the top image uh, doing a major axis regression. And then we, we selected for each plan the, the, the best site image. The, and that image was uh, segmented. We extracted the plant skeleton. We divided this skeleton in elementary uh, segments. And then we compute which was the mean angle for this plan. And this method proved useful for comparing uh, maze lines. In that case, we are comparing a floppy leaf uh, maze line that shows an average leaf angle of about 42 degrees, compared with this one with Eric leaves that shows an average uh, leaf angle over time about uh, 55 degrees. And what is interesting is that these uh, leaf angles were reproducible between experiments with a high irritability. The second thing was to obtain the leaf area density from 3D representations. I'm not going to detail how, uh, too much how we did this. We used, uh, like the presentation before, a space carving algorithm that uh, uses uh, 12 uh, different multi-perspective imaging, in that case 12 images, and uh, by successive uh, steps we end up with a 3D representation with a good uh, length and volume resolution. So when we have this 3D representation and the leaf angle distribution for each uh, voxel, we can scale up this to the whole greenhouse. Uh, it's difficult to represent, but here you have uh, 1,680 plants, and each uh, of the volumes represent the voxel with the size that is proportional to the leaf area inside the voxel, and the colors represent the different, uh, the dominant leaf angle class that they were limited to five to avoid a lot of colors. And then once we have this uh, representation of the whole greenhouse, we, f we feed the model with this information and with the local available light, and then we obtain uh, the amount of light that was intercepted for each plant every day of the year. And for showing how the model uh, proof for, for capturing, uh, the model capture the, the effect of uh, architectural characteristics of the plant and the competition between plants. If you compare this, uh, the, the red uh, with the green one, we see that uh, over time, this plant is competing for light with other ones, and this results with a, with a lower uh, amount of intercepted light. So now we have how much, uh, is, uh, how much incident light uh, arrives to each plant, how much of this light is intercepted, and finally, we, we want to calculate how, much of the, uh, how efficiently this intercepted light is converted to a biomass. So it's just calculated as the relation, as a, a slope of the biomass accumulation to intercepted light, provided that uh, we can estimate the bio volume that is related with biomass uh, non-destructively and, and quite easily. And what uh, we have seen is that here you have three different uh, maze lines growing in two different experiments, that they were quite similar in terms of, of, of temperature, but slightly different in terms of, of light availability. And what we have seen that they, dis they display different growth rates at the, at the same thermal time. When we express these results by the amount of the intercepted light, what we saw that these rates 
that is the relation use efficiency, were common between experiments. And what was interesting is that the ranking of genotypes was maintained between experiments showing a no GYE interaction. Further, we wanted to test whether if these uh, radiation use efficiency values were related with uh, gas exchange measurements performed in single, in single diffs. And this was done in just uh, eight genotypes under two water uh, scenarios, and, and we see that these extracted radiation use efficiency values from the platform correlated uh, quite well with the photosynthesis and stomatal conductance. And this suggests that we can use it, these values, as a surrogate or of canopy photosynthesis for exploring genetic variability at high throughput in large collections of genotypes. Beyond the results, I'm going to present uh, the work of Sue Chen that he aimed at uh, estimating other traits related with light interception, like uh, interception efficiency and extinction coefficients. Here we have another problem, is that Estimating those traits require that uh, the plants are organized in, in micro canopies, sharing the same genotype. And this is not compatible with uh, genetic analysis studies, at least with the number of plants available in our platform. So it would require uh, at least 10,000 10, plants. So what Chue uh, did was to use the pipeline that I showed before, and he extracted information for every single genotype and he built a virtual canopy for each genotype. So in this case, uh, he extracted all the information of the genotype B73, and he built a virtual canopy that was only of this genotype. And then he used the pipeline for extracting all the, all the light-related parameters from, for each of the genotypes. <coughs> and then he could extract different traits, like radiation, maximum radiation interception efficiency, the, the leaf area index, and also the, the light extinction coefficient. And he extended the analysis to a panel uh, of 250 maize hybrids, showing a large variability on all of these uh, studied traits. Then uh, Ot and Santiago performed a GWAS uh, uh, analysis on those uh, extracted traits, and they found significant QTL for, for, some of, for, uh, for all of them. And what is interesting is that some of these QTLs co-localized with the QTLs detected for yield components in a network of experiments in the field with the same uh, maze hybrids. And for concluding, I, I think I, I hope I, I showed how important it is to characterize spatial and temporal the environmental variability in the greenhouse because we are in a semi-controlled uh, environment how these light related parameters can be estimated using uh, at high throughput by combining the 3D uh, reconstructions and a functional structural plan model, and how the suite of methods that I uh, presented here permitted the dissection of biomass accumulation in different traits having each uh, a genetic uh, variability. So we propose that these uh, genetic uh, values extracting from a phenotyping platform can be used for crop models and for field studies opening up the, the way for large scale genetic analysis of the components of, of plant performance. And just to, to thank you all the people that uh, make possible to, to make experiments in the platform and, and obtain all this data. Thank you. <laughs>